In this lesson, we will explore the anatomy of the effective focal spot and the effective focal spot's effect on detail. This lesson is intended for beginning x-ray students or as a review. Before we start, I would like to review the basic x-ray tube anatomy. For this illustration, I will use a stationary anode x-ray tube. It is easier to draw and the concepts are easier to visualize. Everything in this presentation, excepting anode materials, apply equally to rotating anode x-ray tubes. First up is the cathode and the focusing cup. The cathode is the projection element for the electron stream that defines the focal spot size. The longer the cathode wire, the larger the focal spot. The focusing cup does what its name implies. It focuses a stream of electrons onto the target. The target is a small button of tungsten embedded in the anode. Tungsten has a high melting point and protects the anode from melting. The remainder of the anode is made of copper to reduce the cost of the tube. Finally, in the center of the target is a focal spot which is the area where the electrons interact with the target material to produce x-rays. Here is a closer view of just the anode and the target with the focal spot highlighted in gray. If we measure the focal spot perpendicular to the anode face, we get an idea of its actual size. The actual size again is controlled by a combination of the length of the cathode wire and the degree of electron stream focusing caused by the focusing cup. Electrons can be focused by a concave charged surface just like light in a mirror. The effective focal spot is measured parallel to the central ray. It is formed by a combination of the actual size and the angle of the anode or target face. Some people think the anode angle is there to direct x-rays out of the tube. This notion is wrong. X-rays cannot be directed once produced. They are either confined by the x-ray tube housing or allowed to escape via the tube port and collimator. If we were to place our eye underneath the anode, we would see a view that looks like this. Notice the effective size is much smaller than the actual size. This idea that anode angle controls the effective size may be hard to grasp. So here is an example. Here we have two anodes that are identical except for one important feature. The anode faces are set at different angles. The anode on the left is a large angle, about 30 degrees. And the anode angle on the right is cut at a smaller or steeper angle, about 16 degrees. When we project the effective focal spot on the left anode, we will notice that it is large. And the projected focal spot on the right anode is markedly smaller by about a third. Here we have two anodes one with a large focal spot and the other with a small focal spot. In this example, I have made the actual size different so it's obvious which is which. We will project two spots and our patient onto the image receptor. The two spots are equal in their geometry relative to the x-ray tube and the image receptor. When I project the top and bottom rays for the small focal spot, Notice that the amount of penumbral shadow, area of image and sharpness, is also rather small. On the other hand, when I project the large focal spot onto the image receptor, the penumbral shadow is much larger. The x-rays emitted from the top and the bottom disagree more as to the precise location of the spot in the patient, yielding less detail.
So the basic message of this video is rather simple. The geometry, specifically the effective size of the focal spot, will influence detail. The smaller the effective focal spot, the more detail will be seen on the image. The obvious question is, why not make all focal spots very small? The answer is, the smaller a focal spot is, the more concentrated the heat is on the target. Eventually, this concentrated heat will become so large that the electrons would burn a hole or melt the target. The effective focal spot being the size of the focal spot projected at the central ray, the effective focal spot is affected by two factors. The actual focal spot size combined with the anode angle. Often you will find the focal spot is tied directly to MA station selection. Larger MA stations generate more heat per second and require a large focal spot to distribute the heat over a greater area of the target, thus preventing melting or pitting. Thank you for your kind attention. This has been Effective Focal Spot Lesson. Goodbye.